Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard. I'm Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joe at J Wonderdale on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. And today we are working on our Peggle game. Um, and so if you remember last time, there was a lot of us staring at trigonometry and trying to figure out trigonometry, and it wasn't going super well. And yeah, so anyway, I figured it out. All right. More or less. Um, I think there's still some bugs, but I figured out most of this. <coughs> so anyway, let's take a look at that. Are we um, showing the game screen on this? Yeah, no, I'm switching over. Okay. Um, all right. Nice. So I think I have a bug right now, which is I think it's G6. Yeah. All right. So you can see him bouncing. Looks pretty good. It's bouncy enough, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we want to see it like hit one like really. There's a lot of yeah. glancing collisions. Oh, it oh, got oh. stuck there. Hmm. It's like all of these little collisions look right. Yeah. I but, do. I I need to go play Peggle again. I almost feel like we should add a little velocity whenever it hits hits something like so it bounces a little more um, enthusiastically. But I don't know if that's how it works in Peggle or not. Maybe like a five degree angle uh, randomness when you decide. Yeah, we could do that. I think first we got to figure out though what's going on here. I um, Let's see. Um, I couldn't tell from it hitting it. Just uh, did we notice if it is hitting it and then like bouncing up slightly and stopping, or is it just stopping immediately? It's just stopping. Here, let's go over curling. By the way, for this, I just copied the code from curling um, and made it work. Um, so I think I might have done it backwards, though. Um, so in the curling, there are two collisions that happen. Right There's the collider and the collide -y. Yeah. Um, and uh, so if you imagine, imagine something, imagine a curling stone colliding into another curling stone, OK? Hits it straight on. That first curling stone is going to stop, right? Mm -hmm. And the second one's going to start moving. So I'm pretty sure what I did here is I, I copied the physics logic for the first curling stone, when really I should have been copying it for the second curling stone. Mm. Do you understand? Yes. yes. Yeah. One of them. One of them has like you know momentum imparted upon them. Um. Okay. So um, let's see. Oh, did I delete that code? Oh no, I did. That's a problem. What happened? I didn't see. Um, I deleted that code while I was working on it. Oh. Nice. Okay, now we go to the forum and see if I shared this game and really hope, really hope I did. <laughs> um, I posted it in the chat last time, the, the link to the YouTube video of it, which I'm sure contains a link to the game. Mm-hmm. But now nah, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay. <clears throat> Or did I not put a link in this forum post? Oh my god. Go to the YouTube video. I think we might have put one in there. We might have. No problem. All right, going to the YouTube video. Looking at the description. Join Richard, Shannon, Joey as There's we no continue link. practicing. There is no link. Oh my gosh. Okay, I guess we gotta watch the YouTube video on Twitch and then commentate on it until we find out what's what was supposed to be there. <laughs> Um, did this, this, this code really just go into the, um, the void? Yeah. Uh, this is why, um, oh, wait, 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 the spreadsheet, the spreadsheet. Maybe. Do you, um, have any old laptops available where you have not connected them to the internet in a while and you can try and. Load up in there. Little copy on there before it gets overridden by the server. 
Um, I definitely have a. I definitely have it downloaded. So, um, but I don't think we want to go in and watch me pull that out. Well, maybe if, maybe if I have it real quick, it'll be actually quite easy for me to do. If anyone posts a turnip game on the totally real turnip game jam page, would you play it on stream? I feel like that would be funny. I don't know. Tur turn up, turnip jam is really messing me up, man. I, I, I'm out. I will. Yeah, I'll play it. Well, OK, you got your answer. Oh, yeah, Joey doesn't speak for me. Richard, did you ever find out if Turnip Jam is a real thing? I still don't. I still don't. I can't envision this uh, product. But. Um, yes, there is at least one person in the history of time who has made. Um, is it you? Turnip did you jam. make Turnip Jam? No, I don't. I don't cook things, Thomas. Oh, okay. all right. If OK, no, I do cook things. But if it has if the recipe has more than, let's say, one step. Then I don't cook it. So I'm not sure I count putting things in the microwave as cooking, Richard. No, no, no. I do. I like it with we, an oven. We don't, we don't need to gatekeep here. It's fine. You can you call that cooking if you want to. Yeah. All, All right. right. Things end up cooked to some degree. <laughs> Code has been restored. Don't put an egg in the microwave. I'll just tell you that one. Give you that hint. <laughs> yeah. Code has been restored. Okay. So um, in here. We have Collider and Collide, right? And you know what? Just to save time, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Put it in your Word document you have off to the side. Yeah. As everyone, everyone who knows me knows, I do all of my coding inside of Word. Really awesome awesome idea. emphasis. Um, I like to make some certain function calls that are super cool Word art, just because, you know, I do all. All right. So <clears throat> let's analyze this code. So um, inside of this collide function, we're taking in a collider and a collide. Um, in here, we are figuring out. Do I need to change this to get speed real quick? Or oh, whoops, I get speed. Um, we're getting the speed of our collider. We're getting the speed of our collide. We're also getting the angle for our collide and our collider. They're heading. Um, we are then placing the collide away from the collider. So, um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so we're placing it a certain distance from here. And I'm wondering now if perhaps this will actually just work for us. So is the idea here we're essentially envisioning the 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 peg is the collider. And the ball yes. is the collide, and it's as if the peg was moving in the opposite. If we imagine the ball was still, and the peg came and ran into it in the opposite yes. direction of the ball. Okay. Basically. Cool. Um, Lesson in relativity. Yeah, that's that's the general idea. We'll see how well this works. Um, we're going to try this out, and. Oh, speed of flighty. All right. Oh, stay in JavaScript. What did I do? All right. Get rid of that. Don't need it. 5.5, comma, go to blocks. What's that, 5.5? That is the distance um, between the peg and the ball when they are colliding. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way to do it. Um, it's a pretty cool way to do it. Gotta uh, say, yeah, I kind of like it. Um, so, a new kind of peg. Yeah, so the pegs off the screen. All right, all right. If we can't figure this out, we're gonna do something with this instead because this kind of, I'm kind of into this. This looks fun. Um, all right, all right, all right. So maybe we'll do pool. 
Wait, do you guys want to do pool instead? I can. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's do pool instead. That sounds fun. All right, all right, all right. We're changing everything. We're changing everything. We're doing pool now. Um, forget about it. This is not us giving up. This is us deciding that pool is cooler. And mildly uh, giving up. And mildly giving up. Um, okay, so we're going to change it so that all of our balls are the same size now. So five by five, um, because right now they're different sizes. Gosh. Breakfast is running around like a crazy cat. He is a feral cat right now. All right, and we are now going to do, um, instead of uh, the collisions that we're currently doing, where we are just doing the collisions between all sprites of kind peg, we're going to make this ball, by the way. We are going to do collisions with all sprites of kind ball. So we're going to be doing a double array. Um, and wait, 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 wait. Should we do a double array? Double loop? We um we don't need to do that, right? Because we don't we don't want to do extra work. So we're not going to do the possibility of collisions twice. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a variable, which is um collisions checked. Uh balls whose collisions have been checked. That's a great variable name. Um okay. At least it's very clear which one that is inside of the variables drop down. All right, so what we're going to do here um, is we're going to return the, we're going to make this the array ball sprites of kind ball. Like this. And now um, for each of these guys, we're going to do a, oh my God, this is just lunacy is currently happening because of our, um, uh, we haven't been, you know, messing with our, our code at all. And I think the ball is colliding with itself is what is currently happening. Mm -hmm. nice. So, um, all right, we're going to make a, um, another loop in here, and we're going to make a variable, which is um, uh, to check like that. Okay. Um, so we're going to change this value to be to check like this. And now um, <laughs> what we're going to be doing here is, um, we are going to, for each of these balls, we are going to check um, against all of the balls who collisions have, I guess this is actually have not been checked. And then we remove the ball from this array every time we do it. So that way we don't end up doing more work than we have to, you know. Um, so because if we check A collides with B and C, and then when we go to C, we also check to C collide with A, we're doing that twice. We don't need to do that. So all right. Um, OK. So I guess I should change the name of this variable. There we go. Collisions haven't been done yet. Um, and we're just going to set that to be the array of all kinds of sprout, all sprites of kind ball. Now, um, for here, we are going to be looping over. And let's see, we always just want to loop over this. This collisions haven't been done yet, right? So you're going to get mad if we change that array to inside the loop. Uh, I don't know how JavaScript likes that sort of thing. What? Is it going to get mad if we change the array inside the loop? where we're going through the array. We're iterating through the array. Collisions haven't been yeah. done yet. OK, and for this outer one, we whatever. can actually just use this because we do want it to be this. So now we don't have the issue. OK, yes, now we're good. All right, um, so for each of these balls, um, we are going to be checking the to check and the value. Um, and then at the end of this um, iteration, we want to remove them from the list. So we are going to do arrays. Um, let's see, is there, do we have remove element? No, that's just a secret thing that we have in JavaScript, but we don't show in blocks, probably because I argued against it because it's not something you can do in JavaScript. But fun fact, in JavaScript, there is remove element. You can just pass in the object. But I can't use that. So um, we're just going to do, let's see, remove value at. Right here, then that. 
collisions haven't been done yet. Find index of two check. And there we go. OK, so this is going to go ahead and remove our thing. And now for each of these guys, we are going to check that distance squared like we were doing before. So we're going to do two check and value like that. And then we are going to collide with two check and value. And lastly, we need to make sure that. <laughs> so if you um, watch that, <laughs> yeah. So um, the reason this is happening is because all of the balls are colliding with themselves. Um, and so we need to also do a check, which I was just coding. And it's not that I forgot about that, but I promise. Um, we also need to do and to check does not equal value because you can't collide with yourself. All right, now this falls down and we are having all of the balls collide with each other. And just for fun, let's see how many, what FPS we're getting. Yeah, this is, this is absolutely fine. This is not a problem. Yeah, yeah we're good. All right. Cool. So there we go. Now we got collisions working. We're going to go ahead and toss this stuff. Oh, I'm going to get rid of my amazing drawing also. All right. Collapse blocks for my code. OK. So um, this is all nice and good. Let's go ahead and do um, the pool table. All right. So hmm. I guess let's pull up a, a diagram of a regulation pool table. I realize we're going to end up having to do the same collision code that we were trying to avoid for the edge of the pool table. I think. What? Is that true? We're going to end the same collision code that we were struggling to write for the peggle. Uh, we're going to end up no, having to won't. do it anyway for the edge of the pool table. No, we don't. No, because we can cheat because they're horizontal and vertical lines. Um. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, that was my secret plan. Believe me, I would not have suggested we should do pool if I did not have that plan in mind. <laughs> um. OK, Wikipedia, give me a diagram. There we go. That's what I want. Um, all right, this is a snooker table drawn to scale. Um, and I assume that's the same as a pool table. I don't know. Is it? Um, I don't know what's going on at the bottom half of it, but. Yeah, snooker is this thing where they have like pegs and stuff on the thing. Um, Heating. But I think it's sufficient for our purposes, probably. Heating. Wait, what? People heat billiard tables? I don't, I don't know. We're not. We're not going to go. <laughs> keep going into it. Um. Okay. This was kind of I get a higher resolution of this image. There we go. All right. So I kind of just wanted to get the aspect ratio right, which is why I was looking at this. So it looks like we got 150 centimeters by um, 224 centimeters. Sorry, other way around. 224 by 150. Um, that's what we're going to be going for. So 224 divided by 150 is. One point five. Um, so that's easy to do. Um, we're going to go ahead and set a background image, which is going to be a pool table. And we want this to be as big as we can make it. Um, so is this. I'm I don't want to draw this by hand, do I? No, I don't. We're going to make this with a sprite and then I'll draw it. Um, so we want to do um, 1.5 times uh, our thing. So we can actually for once use the aspect ratio. So I'm going to go ahead and make this um, 24. We're going to lock the aspect ratio and now I'm going to make the width. Um, let's see, 160 is going to be too much. No, no, 160 actually works. Um, yeah, so what What if I, what do we want to, we should probably have a little bit of wiggle room though, huh? So let's do like 10 pixels on either side. So we'll make this 140. So that'll be 140 by 92. All right. Um, and we are now going to uh, put a rectangle on this guy and now I'm wondering if I do actually just want to programmatically draw this, because I'm gonna I want some I'm gonna want to put the, the holes in like exact places, right? 
So, you know, what, let's just draw the border and then we will. Um, the border in the field and then we will just uh, programmatically handle the rest. That and use the teal there. There we go. All right. New variable. Dual table. Link that. Let's see. All right. Our dimensions are definitely all out of whack here. Right? Like, how big is a ball? Is this really the right aspect ratio? Seems different from the picture, but I don't know. That's math. No. That point zero seven seven seven. I was looking at the I was looking at the outer one. We had to look at the inner one. Um so this is this one twelve divided by two twenty four. Okay, so it's double. Um which means this should be seventy. Whoops, I locked it. One forty by seventy. Are you guys any good at pool? Nope. But it's fun. I can I can do the the hit it and it hit something part, uh, just like the first time, just one time. I think you just said you're good at pool. It's the whole <laughs> thing, Joey. Just I uh, I can do the first hit. Yeah, not, my, not well either, but like I've done it. My cousin, who is like 15 years younger than me, um, uh, has hustled me at pool before. He's he was quite good, and at the time he was like. A small child. This was like when I was in college, so he was probably like seven or eight. <laughs> um, did, he, did he need a little stool to see over the edge of the table? I don't remember. I don't. I think he must have. He was pretty short. It seemed right. like it would be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we might enlarge this later or something like that um, as we decide. So um, what did I mean by we can cheat because we are hitting the horizontal edges? So we're going to be doing collision with the edges and reflecting collision against a purely horizontal or purely vertical surface is actually very easy to do because all you have to do is either negate the Y or negate the X, depending on if you were hitting a horizontal surface or a vertical surface. Um, so let's do that. Um, we are for each of these guys going to detect when we have passed the edge in any of the directions for this table. So let's go ahead. We're going to do all of our collisions. Um, where was I doing those? In here. Yep, I was doing them in a function called do collisions. Here we go. So um, what we're going to do, and you know what? Just to get ahead of this, Let's go ahead. We're going to define. Um, let's see. How wide is my edge here? One, two, three, four. OK. We're going to go ahead and define the dimension of um, the the like width so that I can just use the left top right bottom to do these calculations. Um, so I'm going to make a variable for this. And we're going to call this bumper width. That's a, that's official pool terminology. The bumper. All right. So after we've done these collisions, we're going to do another loop. And now here we are going to constrain everything into inside the pool table. And so this is going to cause some problems because let's let's imagine that I was like doing a really nice physics simulation. Okay. If I was doing that. I would want to take into account things like, what if I run in and collide with a ball that is already touching the wall? Well, then obviously I should just be placed away. You know, the, 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 the ball should not be like hit into the wall or hit into the other ball so they're overlapping. Nothing should ever be overlapping. You know, we're not going to handle that. It doesn't matter. So um, what we, the main thing we want to do is make sure that we never get hit outside the pool table. And if at the end of this collision resolution, they happen to be overlapping a little bit, it'll resolve itself eventually. Um, 
maybe in a weird way, but it will. So, you know, we don't have to worry about that. So we just want to make sure everything is always constrained inside of the pool table. And we'll see if anything really weird happens. We might have to handle this. I don't think we're going to have to, though. I think it's going to be fine. Um, all right. So for each of these guys, we are going to see um, if we are outside the bounds. And we're going to do that just by doing some simple comparisons. So if our um, x or y, and um, by the way, we need to we need to define the ball radius. Um, because we're going to have to use that. So um, let's see, I made this five by five. So our ball radius is uh, two and a half. Um, I think we're just going to call that two. So hmm. and maybe I'm actually just going to use the left, right, top, bottom for the sprite. Originally, I was going to use this ball radius instead, but uh, I'm just going to treat it like a rectangle. It'll be fine. Um, so uh, we're going to grab a property block, and we're going to say if the bottom of our two check is greater than the bottom of our table. Did I create a, a variable for this? Yeah, pull table. Minus our bumper width. Then we need to first constrain within the table then reflect the y component of the velocity. So um, let's go ahead and set the bottom to this value. And we are going to correct this. Stop freaking out. And just so that we don't get into any weird situations, I am going to actually, instead of just flipping the vy by multiplying it by negative 1, I'm instead going to take that VY, I'm going to figure out the absolute, and I'm going to make it negative so that we never get into a weird case where we end up flipping, 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 flipping because our collisions are working out weird. Um, we don't want that to happen. So we are just going to um, set this to be the two check. Uh, right, two check, VY, absolute and then negate it by doing 0 minus that. All right, cool. Let's do this four more times. Next, we're going to do is the right greater than the right minus bumper width. We change all these to be right. Now we change this to be Vx. Change this to be Vx. And there we go. OK, so let's let's watch this. We should now. Yeah, so you can already see we're um, because we have um, acceleration on our ball, it's bouncing. Um, but um, you can see them and when they hit the edge, they are like, you know, getting hit around there. So that's cool. That's that's about what we want. Um, all right, so we got those two sides done. Let's do um, the other one now. So we're going to do top. So in this case, what we're going to do is if to check top is less than the pool table top, and this time we want to do plus, then we're going to set the top to be this. And we just want to set the VY to be the absolute instead of the negative. There go. And we're going to do this now for left. So we'll, just like before, we'll change all these to be the X version. So left, left, left. Now this becomes the X. All right, cool. And now everyone should be stuck inside the pool table. Bounce, 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 bounce. Chaos, 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 chaos. All right, we kind of got, we kind of have a super elastic collisions right now. Um, 
So we're going to have to handle that. Joey's, Joey's trying it's to just away and cool. keep this in there, um, <laughs> but um, I don't think it's a uh, this if, if pool, pool tables really works like this, you know, it would actually be good for you because eventually they're going to go in. I yeah. Think. Okay. So um, so Richard, so imagine each pool ball is attached with a tiny rocket from uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you contact the pool ball, it does fire off the rocket and it keeps on going. Well, okay, but, those, but the rockets get destroyed after a little while, so, you know, that would eventually uh, stop. Yeah, but that's the fall of the rocket. I, I, we got a perfect rocket here. I don't see why this is a bad thing. Okay, all right, anyway. Um, all right, so um, let's fix that. Um, we're going to uh, basically, um, I, first let's implement this for our um, uh, collisions with the side of the pool table because that's going to be really easy for us to do. So right now we're getting this absolute and then we're like either negating it or keeping a positive. Um, so all we're going to do is just subtract some amount from that. Um, and we need to constrain it to make sure we don't go below zero. So we can just subtract some amounts. We'll try, I don't know, different values. I guess let's put it in a variable. Um, I don't know what to call this variable. It's not drag. We're uh, not just going to add FX to uh, to these. We don't have acceleration. I I don't want to mess with FX. Okay. I mean, we should we should do that. All right, all right. We'll add FX, Joey. Right, I'm taking off the acceleration. This guy also. Um. Uh, which will make this game much less exciting already. Um. All right. So I want to um. We're going to give these guys all FX. So let's just do this inside of non-sprite, non-created. Non-created sprite of kind of player. Sorry, ball. We're going to give these guys FX and FY. And FX and FY stand for friction X and friction Y. And friction is kind of like acceleration, except that it always goes towards zero. So, um, if you had, let's say you were going in a positive velocity and you had a negative acceleration, eventually you would flip and start going in a negative velocity, right? You would keep going and then you would turn around. Friction is different because you will get to that zero point and then you just stop. But otherwise, they're the same. They work on the same way each frame, except for that, you know, crucial detail. Um, okay, so we're going to have positive values for this. And um, for the um, FX... I, I, I never know what a good value for friction is. We always just try out values. So we're going to set this to five. And, and period should be the same unit as acceleration, right? But it, but I still don't know what a good, I still, I, like, I wouldn't know what good acceleration I, yes, is. Yes, that, that does apply to acceleration too. So we just, just as always, put 500 and call it a day. That was a joke. 500, I feel like we'll stop them instantly. But it will, yeah. Okay. Um, so. We are just going to give everyone a random velocity for our testing, um, a random speed and a, um, I'm sorry, a random angle and, a, and some, you know, speed. So let's go ahead and do sprite utils. I want degrees to radians right there. And I actually got a good amount of sleep last night. Can you guys tell that my energy is up? Yeah. Little, yeah. Okay, so we're giving them all random velocity. Just like slow motion. Yeah. Stop. I feel like that's probably actually a decent amount of friction. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. The first time went really well. And then, oh, there we go. All right. I, I think we're going to have to um, do it at both ends. We're going to attack this problem at both ends. All right. So we're going to reduce their speed and also reduce their, um, also do this this friction method. Um, I'm, I you know I can't say for sure what's causing this hyper acceleration. Um, my guess would be that it has 
No, actually, I don't think it has anything to do with the walls because I think when he just saw it there, it was between it started between two balls that were not touching the wall. So, you know, I I, I don't know what's causing that hyper acceleration, but um, every time they collide, then we're never going to get that issue. It's probably just like I don't know some floating point error. I don't know. I, I'm not sure yet. All right. Um, OK, so uh, we're going to go ahead and reduce their speed. Um, we'll do it here, and we will also do it inside of our collision function. Um, and we're going to just call this variable uh, velocity dampener. Um, and we're going to go ahead and make a function for this. Dampen velocity. This is going to take in a number. Vel. And it really should be called dampen speed, but whatever. And we are going to um, take this and do, let's see, velocity. And then I want to max. And I want to return. Okay, we're going to do a return of velocity minus this variable. And we're doing the max between that and zero, so we never go negative. And now I'm just going to go ahead and wrap all these things. Oh, I want to wrap the absolute, actually. So like that. All right. Right now, this is doing nothing because we had, we didn't actually set our velocity dampener to be anything. We'll try out values once we do this in all the other places. All right, now, so inside of this collide function, we have two speeds that we're getting. Um, we're just going to go ahead and dampen those two. Like that. Oops. All right. Now we're going to put in a value here, um, which is going to be 0 0.1. I don't know. Yeah, I figured that was too little. Uh, 5. Now, we're, now we just reset the game 100 times to see if we get that hyper acceleration ever happening. Okay, yeah, that's, that's too much, I think. They seem kind of sticky. Yeah, we'll change this to, let's just make it 1. See what that does for us. That seemed good. OK. How about it? I patched this game. Pool, but all the game, uh, all the balls react as if they're jello. So they like kind of stick together and like squish a little. Nope. Oh, uh, really got it. Oh. Oh, boy. I think what must be happening is like we have a ball pushing a ball inside of another ball, but then I don't understand why it just like gets so high so fast, you know? Mm -hmm. It's the thing. It does seem to happen it though when we have a bunch of them. Yeah, the balls like stuck in between a bunch of balls. Maybe we get a scenario where it's like registering a collision multiple times, and but I don't know why that would add to its velocity. Hmm. Do they they don't stick together a little bit when they're moving? I, I can't tell at the frame rate I'm getting. Okay, here's a here's a here's something I could do. Um, I need to draw a diagram. Um, so. One thing that could be happening, this is our ball that's getting made super fast. All right. And we have a series of balls over here. Oh, 
like this, okay? Um, and when we do the collision for this guy, um, so this guy goes in here and collides. Oh, let me choose a different color. This one collides with this one. Mm. All right. And then it's getting pushed so that it now overlaps with this one. So it's getting pushed again, so it now overlaps with this one. Getting pushed again, so it overlaps with this one. And all of the speeds of these guys are just getting, like, thrown at it. You know what I'm saying? Possibly. Hmm. Where's the collide function? You could, uh, no, it doesn't. I think it's probably the ball collisions. I was going to say you could take out the ball collisions and see if it's still repros with just the wall collisions enabled, but. Well, I then I, that won't really yeah. work, will it? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the ball collisions, because I, I, I swear I so when I'm too. seeing it happen, it's happening like in the middle of the arena sometimes. Yeah, when there's like a cluster of them. Yeah. Sometimes it's fine. Okay. These guys. Nope. That's fine. Shoots up. I wish I could play this in slow motion. All right. Like the but unfortunately, we played you just yet. slowing down the speed will not allow that to happen. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. um, you just need to use like a hundred percent of your brain, like in all those like two thousand era movies. <laughs> hmm. Can I look at the ball collision code? Yeah. So let's let's just walk through it. All right. Um, so we have our angle of incidence, which is the angle from our collider to our collide. We're then getting the speed of our collider and our collide and their headings. And um, the collide gets knocked away from the collider. So we need to make it so that they no longer are colliding. And the way we do that is by just taking one of them and placing it a certain distance away from the other. What is happening here? So the, the collide is the one that gets placed away. Um, now what we're doing is we are calculating the vx and vy components and i do believe this is um basically doing uh it's like a, a dot i don't know i can't remember this math it was so long ago i wrote this code Ugh. let's let's all take an hour break where we go and watch the stream where i wrote this <laughs> all right and then um, we come back and we'll share our findings. Mm -hmm. um, Thomas, let me share this code and give it to you um, so that you can look at it without me having to scroll around. It's fine. Yeah, thanks. There you go. Um, all right. Solutions, solutions, solutions. So, one dumb solution. is um, when we displace the ball, we then displace all balls that it collides with. All right. Is that really a dumb solution? I felt dumb, but maybe it's not. Like, I it mean, they, be, it's I not mean, like they occupy the same space. When you displace... When you do that displacement, then you'll have to check all the balls that they collide with. Like hey, it becomes a, a quite a lot of work potentially, but realistically, it probably wouldn't be. Um, you know, you're not going to hit the worst case scenario very often. Yeah, it's true. Um, well, let's just try it. It's easy code to write, and. Um... <laughs> We'll see if the uh, frame freezes up on the stack overflow real quick or not. 
Are we gonna are we gonna get to do recursion make code? We can do that. Yeah. Hey, here's another thing. Um what if we only collide with one ball per frame? Let's put that there. Nope, I didn't fix it. Nope. Okay. Um, because that only that only really fixes the too many collisions problem in one direction, you know. Um, and I'm not sure that this will fix it either. Um, Osilla VP says, can you reduce the number of balls to try and see better what's happening and or slow things down? So I don't think we can slow things down and still replicate the problem, unfortunately. Um, we can try. So, you know, let's give it a shot at least. So we'll change the speed to be 10 and we'll change our friction to be one. Um, it is possible, like, uh, if it's just bad positioning based, then it's very possible that Slowing it down is fine, but we'll set it to be 10 and we will just get rid of friction. Uh, just can watch. you reduce number of balls to try and see better what's happening? Uh, yeah, I'll do yeah. it, but first I want to see if we can get it to repro with this. Yeah. And let's turn off our velocity dampening too. Change that to zero. This is kind of soothing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Watching the fish tank. So they are getting faster, some of them. Yeah. It does feel like this would be a lot better if every time it hit a ball, the ball turned pink and it's infection game instead of what it is. But. So I guess another possibility is that we are just dealing with the situation where we're getting rounding errors and they're just adding up. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. The the situation I was thinking of was that you had like three balls in a row with the one in front getting pushed by the other one, but then the one in the back pushing the middle ball into it. So it's kind of... Uh, Railgunning it, I guess. I don't know how that's the right term. Mm. OK, we're going to go back to our original parameters. We're going to reduce the number of balls, though. Um, so we'll just make it 15. We'll cut it in half. Go. Let's see if we can get it to happen. It's possible this is a problem we also just don't need to worry about with a reasonable number of balls. We'll go there. Cool. So I don't understand why you're the thing you're mentioning would cause it to get faster and faster, though, Joey. It shouldn't if everything else is set up exactly right. Um, but if the the ball is getting reset to a speed, I guess it would have to be getting reset to a, a the same speed instead of getting pushed back behaving weirdly. Yeah, right. I am seeing strange accelerations sometimes. And I think it happens when they're like both going in the same direction and are colliding. But then again, this is just never happening now. 
So the using an actual number of pool balls might just fix this issue. Uh, yeah, it's like a good yeah. first step. Like I have some ideas, obviously, of how I would debug this if I was actually trying to debug it. Um, namely, what I would do is probably I would try and I mean, honestly, what I would do is I would just instrument the game engine to pass in a like constant time step, make sure it repros, and then I would just record the data of where all of the balls are so I could just play it back, see what's happening. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm not going to do all that on stream because it's a little bit too much code to be writing in TypeScript and, you know, it would take everything. So instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to keep going forward with this code. We'll see what happens. And um, if we run into this issue again while we are actually doing the game, then we can look into, you know, fixing it. How many pool balls are there? 16. I Google it. Oh, OK. Does that include the white ball? I don't know. I didn't. I just saw Google said. Um, I feel like it must not. 1, 2, 3, but. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep, it does. OK, so 15 in the pyramid and then we have one um, cue ball. And um, so I changed this to be 14 and we now have the correct number. Um, so that's cool. Um, Q Phoenix says 11 pool balls. I don't think that's right. All right, um, and now what we're going to do is um, I just want to We'll see if I can speed write this code. So right now we're just kind of randomly laying out all of these. We're not randomly, we're actually doing it in grid, but I want to lay these guys out in a pyramid, and then I'm just going to do a pool break. And I think that might actually be worst case scenario for the bug we're talking about. So yes. I want to see what happens. Um, all right. Um, OK, so how do we how do we lay things out in a pyramid? Um, How do we do that? Um, I'm, I'm sure there's a clever way to do it, but I'm going to go ahead and just do um, column num. Um, we are going to set this to be 1. And what we're going to do is for index from zero to how many columns do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So from index from zero to four, we are going to do a loop for index from zero to column num minus one. We are going to change column num by uh, two each time we do this. And we are going to change our top by a certain amount. So we're going to start with a variable that is going to be our top. Or actually, we should do our center because otherwise I'm going to have trouble calculating it. Um, so we're going to set our y to be 60. Why did we change column number by two? Um, because you're right. Yeah, I exchange by one. Okay. Um, and then we will change our y by Negative ball radius. Ball. I guess. Sounds right to me. That. OK, so um, what we do here is we are going to create a ball. We're going to set its position to B, and we need to go ahead and create. Oh. Uh, it happened. Yeah. Or I'm just going to make a variable called C. So we're going to make this C. So this uh, position is going to be um, our, whatever our left is going to be, which I'm just going to make something up. I'm going to do 60 um, or 80, I guess. Make it halfway through. And then here we're going to do um, 80 plus C times ball radius. There. Oh, and by the way, we're going to get rid of this random velocity code. 
80 plus C times ball radius. Like that, so you can see everyone's kind of just getting laid out now. Um, and for the Y, we are going to be doing, oh, whoops. Y minus ball radius plus index times ball radius times two. So go that in there. Do, do, do. Whoa. Whoop, 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 whoop. Um, our collisions are messing things up. Do we need to move where the, the pink ball spawns? Yeah, we do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set the X of this guy to be, yeah, sure, zero. Like that. All right, cool. So you can see our pyramid is starting to get laid out, but they're too close together, so they're just like jostling each other around. Um, so I think we actually have to up our ball radius, so we're going to make this uh, 2.5. Oh, whoops. Okay. Still too tightly packed, huh? Let's up the ball radius again. We're going to make it three. Best to work with the integers. There we go. Nice. All right. So there you go. Everyone's lined up. Um, It looks really weird, but that's fine. We're fine with that. <laughs> um, and we're going to go ahead and set our my sprite VX to be. Fifty and we are going to um, stop. I don't want it to run until I actually. OK, until I'm done. Um, we're going to change the my sprite VY. Sorry, regular Y by and we're just going to change it by a random number from I don't know. Negative 10 to 10. All right, go. Break. Break. Hmm. Break. Pretty good. Yeah, it's worked pretty well. Um. Yeah, I think this is fine. I mean, so, okay, here's one thing. Look at this. The pink ball just charges through there. Yeah, it does seem like it should be losing more velocity than it is. Yeah. Do we, when we collide, do we ensure that the velocity is taken away from the ball that oh. the collider, when it's transferred into the collide? Um. Did we just delete that code when we copied it over? I mean, no, I just copied the code over straight this time. So OK, great. I get to run, though, unfortunately. So yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go. But bye, everybody. Well, Thanks. I think you both have to go. Yeah, we got to go. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back on Wednesday. I'm Richard Everett from the Make Code Forum. Joey, J. Wonderall, the Make Code Forum. Uh, Thomas had Sparks in the Make Code Forum. And we will right. see you later.